recorded live in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Trivial Warfare. More than just a pub quiz, Trivial Warfare is your gateway to a worldwide trivia community. Join your hosts, Jonathan. We just described Ric Flair as the end of the whole man <laughs> and player of the apes. <laughs> Chris. Yo, we going down to Sesame Street. <laughs> that's, that's your impression of hardcore rap? No. <laughs> Carmella. That would irritate the hell out of me. I'm like, I just want my groceries. <laughs> <laughs> my ice cream is melting. <laughs> Ben. ben. Four halogens in that list? It was, oh my god. You were like, it's not the halogens. I'm like, no, Ben, no. Those damn halogens got me again. <laughs> and the rest of the Trivial Warfare Army for another week of fun and games. Now here's your host, Jonathan Oaks. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Trivial Warfare. We are the podcast that takes the pub quiz out of the pub and brings it home to you. My name is Jonathan and I am here today with Mr. Ben Young. Hello, Ben. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Good afternoon, Ben. Yes. It's our Black History Month episode. Oh, I'm stoked, man. I had soul food for lunch in did preparation you? for oh, this. Man. Yes, I did. I'm I jealous. Did. I'm, I'm jealous. so ready. I'm so I got a little bit of itis, but we're gonna power through. He got the itis. Did you take bit, any Robitussin? <laughs> nah, I take no tussin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be dropping out soon. I'm just here for the intros and to make sure that we got everything underway. But Ben, uh, I think we're gonna have a great time today, don't you? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. It Very is much so. a good group today. Rob Everett is in the house. Hello, Rob. Hello, Jonathan. It is good to have you here, my friend. Good to be back. We have things that are blank. Season two champion Ashley Gray with us. Hello, Ashley. Hi, everybody. You have a permanent <laughs> title for the rest of your Oaks Media life. You are the champion of T Tab season two. How does that feel? I love it. It it feels great. It's a it's a good conversation starter. It's a good way to make friends at work. It's a good way <laughs> to it. push this podcast on people that don't care or would not have heard. <laughs> 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 Outstanding. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome to this show. Glad you're here. Zakia Mendoza is with us today. Hello, Zakia. Hello. 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 I am so glad you are here. You are going to be the life of the party in this episode. I can already feel it. Oh, 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 oh. That was the best uh, Arsenio Hall. Oh, God. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, it wasn't a good Arsenio Hall, just just for the record. Not not good. I didn't say it was good. That was okay. my best. <laughs> and Greg Johnson is with us today. Hello, Greg. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Greg, I'm, glad I'm to be back. so glad that you are here. We are going to have a lot of fun today. But before we do that, I want to get to know everybody a little bit better. So, Rob, we'll start with you. Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. I am in the great city of Detroit. I'm Detroit proper, not Metro, not any other city that claims to be Detroit. I am in Detroit. I am, by day, I am a project manager for a, a diesel engine manufacturer. By night, I am, for the last nine years, have been a trivia host for Sporkle, has been, been doing that for, for quite a bit. And I guess you could say by midnight, uh, I am also a podcast co-host as well. I, I host a co-host a show called Better on Draft, where we talk to craft beer brewers owners and all things alcohol uh we actually just had an episode with uh, revolution last night uh revolution brewing out of chicago so uh, i guess you know check that out I'm, again better on draft something fun about myself uh, it's kind of funny because the last time i said something fun about myself that i said that the last time i was on this show that we had two kids and then had three so the last time I was on this show, we had three kids, and we are in the process of adopting Ooh. number four. Wow. Wow. Nice. Oh, man. Now, so, Rob, play it straight now. Play it straight. Do you want me to stop inviting you? <laughs> because no, if every no, time you no. come on the show, you got to get another kid, I don't want to put pressure on you. 
<laughs> so so for, for for you and and everyone listening they're all girls so I, i'm i'm still pretty much a rookie as a father i've only been a dad for three years so our kids that are currently in the house are 13 15 and 16 and the newest addition is uh she had just turned 12 mm. so and her, yeah wow. all girls Congratulations, my friend. God you pleasure. and you heard when he when he said what he does. He has three different things that he does. Rob is a busy man, and we are lucky he is here with us today. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Ashley. Rob also has four daughters. He's a broke man. That's not. Oh that's no. Not, and a wife. Leave that out. And a wife. Don't forget yeah. that part. And a wife. <laughs> All right, Ashley. Ashley, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. I live in Northern Virginia. About two, uh, not really two hours, like an hour and a half west of DC. I do data analysis and data science at a really cool uh, healthcare company. They're awesome. And something cool, I think I already used my We Are Marshall cool thing, didn't mm-hmm. I? I don't know. Who, how would you guys know? Because like, that's been a year ago and things, so many things have happened. If you want to say it, if you want to do that story, do that story. You, you do what you want. You know what? I will say this. I used to live overseas for for a couple years where did you live that was fun i lived in rota spain Ooh, so how yeah. different what what's what's the biggest difference between spain and the u.s in terms of living there everything is much more relaxed hmm. and the nighttime like after after i would say 11 p.m is like that's like family time you see kids being pushed by their parents and strollers and people getting ice cream and Walking down down the, the the beach and you know eating at restaurants and usually here that's like, you know, witching hour. People are out like <laughs> it's at right? bars acting crazy and stuff, right? So wow. it's it's very different. And yeah, they they take time for themselves in the middle of the day. Siesta is real. Mm-hmm. It it was just so cool living there. It was just like completely life changing. Wow, that's here we get awesome. a chance. Well, we are super glad that you are here. Thanks for joining us. All right, Zakia, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. Well, hello, I'm Zakia Mendoza. Outside of the fact that I'm a straight up fool, I'm also sounding like a amalgamation of Rob and Ashley right now because I am originally from Detroit proper, but I live in Canton, Michigan now. And uh, like Rob, well, he's, you know, Detroit, Detroit. He, he's cool. And like <laughs> Ashley, I also work in data analysis and data science. All right. Woo. <laughs> Go nerds. Woo. <laughs> Go nerds for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a Jeopardy silver medalist and I appeared in March 2020. But honestly, over the last year, I haven't become more interesting Oh, wow. I'm a mom now, so I'm foolish more. I, I have no shame. And uh, that happens when you clean up uh, really dirty diapers. I was so. about to ask if you have any new poop stories that, uh, <laughs> I mean, you have a whole year of one year old at this point. So uh, mm-hmm. any anything uh, magical happen in that regard? This morning, ah. uh, we had uh, an epic poop, probably the biggest one I'd seen, mm. dark green in color, very oh. lumpy, <laughs> oh, no. covered the whole thing up the back. And I think this was his first up the back poo. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, uh, that's that's uh, much worse than Winnie the poo is his uh, cousin that they don't talk about up the back poo. Yes, <laughs> up the back poo, Winnie's uh, unfortunate cousin. That's that's when you just take the baby in the yard and just holds him just down. Holds him like, off, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Be Get it in the shower. <laughs> this this is why we adopt teenagers. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nope. Oh, all right. We are lucky to have you here. And then Greg Johnson, tell everybody where you're from, what you do, and something fun about yourself. All right. It was. Um, I am from Aiken, South Carolina. I am a software engineer, and typically, I, I about myself. I typically don't have think of too many things fun about myself, but I'll take. I'll just cheat and think about my niece and nephew because i basically saw, saw them growing up you know from day one they are now both in college one's in grad school and one's in um i guess undergrad school so I'm, I'm whenever i think of something interesting and proud i think about you know just them living their lives and getting getting ready to do big things so i'll i'll cheat and say i'll talk about that 
Fantastic. I love it. So we are going to have a great show today, and this should be the last time you hear my voice until the ad break in the middle. I'm going to be turning it over to Ben here to run things so I can get the heck out of here because this ain't my space. This space is designated for you guys in the Black History Month episode. So Ben, take it away, my friend. All right, so uh, like we always do with every episode, we're going to start with a little warm it up, Chris. It's time to warm it up, a trivial warfare today, and there's only one person who can warm it up for the TWA, and that's Chris, and sometimes Jonathan. And Ben will be playing the part of Chris today. I have a list. Let me give you the exact title of this so that I can be as exact as possible. Let's scroll up here. I have a list. This comes from namecensus.com. This is a list of the most common surnames for black people in the United States. All right. So I've got the top 1,000 names here. I want to see how many of the top 20 that each of you can name. Y'all, y'all ready for this? <laughs> ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rob, we're going to start with you. Well, I will start with Miller. Miller is, oops, went too far. Hold on. Uh, Miller is 26th. Oof. Just outside the top 20. Uh, Greg. Well, I think I'll, I'll cheat a little bit and I'll say Johnson. <laughs> oh, your, oh your, your own name, huh? Uh, Johnson is number two on the list. Good job. That's uh, 669,000 black people named Johnson. Wow. Zakia. Washington. Washington is number 20 on the list. I'm sorry, number 19. I'm sorry. Number 19 on the list. Now, fun fact about Washington before we go to Ashley. So there are 155,000 black people named Washington. The total number of people in the United States named Washington is 177,000. So if you meet someone with the last name of Washington, there's an 87% chance that they're black. <laughs> <laughs> Give you that little fun fact. Ashley. Well, my lucky Johnson was stolen, so I'm going to go with <laughs> Williams. Williams is number one with a bullet, 774,000. Oh. Great job. Okay, Rob, back to you. Ugh. Yeah, I'm like completely drawing a blank, so I'm just going to use my own and say Everett. <laughs> okay. Everett's not the top 20. Let me tell you where you are. Everett is... Uh, where is it? I'm just trying to scroll through a thousand names here. I probably should use Control F at some point. I'm trying to avoid using my keyboard because I have a tactile keyboard and it makes too much noise. Everett is 498th. <laughs> There's only 9,000 of you out there, so... <laughs> Greg, I'll I'll stick with the Jays and I'll say Jones. Jones is number four on the list, uh, five hundred forty-eight thousand. Good job, Zakia. I'm gonna go with my maiden name, and the reason why I thought I was really related to Will Smith. Smith is number three on the list. Good job, five hundred sixty-four thousand. All right, so we've got the top four knocked out. Ashley, you're up. Okay, at this point, I'm just thinking about people that I went to elementary school with <laughs> so um did we, did we already say brown was that already we said we oh, not. let's say it brown 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 brown, brown. <laughs> brown number five on the list five hundred eleven thousand. good job all right rob let's try simmons simmons is not in the top 20 yeah i am consistent yeah you are uh <laughs> You're naming a lot of uh, not that common names. <laughs> I'm just doing the same thing Ashley's doing. I'm going through through elementary school, <laughs> you know, all these school lists. And like, I had a friend who was a Simmons. I'm like, oh, okay, let's just try Simmons. <laughs> yeah, Sim- Simmons is 47th on the list, actually. Yeah, I'm improving. You're, you're, you're getting better. You're getting there. <laughs> all right, Greg, you're up. I'll say Harrison. Harrison is not in the top 20. Harrison is 100th on the list. Cool. All right. Zakia, you're up. Go, going with my uh, sister's married name, Jackson. Jackson is number six on the list. 375,000. Good job. Ashley? 
I was going to go with Jackson. All right. <laughs> now that I can't do Jackson, let's say Robinson. Robinson is 10th on the list. 238,000. Good job. All right, Rob. Let's see if you can get on the board here. Hmm. How about Davis? Davis is number seven on the list. 352,000. Right. You're on the board. All right, Greg. I was I should have stuck with the Jays. Uh, what about you know I, I will stick with Jays. What about Jordan? Jordan is not in the top twenty. Jordan is fifty eighth. Fifty eighth. Zakia. I'm gonna go with one of another one of those exclusive black people last names. I think <laughs> Freeman. Freeman is not in the top twenty. Let's see where Freeman is. Uh, yeah, Freeman is ninety second on the list. Yeah. <laughs> and, and black people only represent 28% of all Freemans. So that's, really? that's a bit surprising. Yeah, a bit surprising. All right. Ashley, you're up. Uh, did we already say Lewis? We have now that you no. said it. Okay, good. And I'm trying to keep track of what like we're all saying. And yeah, I, I'll I was do like, a recap, I didn't cross yeah. this one off, so let's go with it. Let's go with <laughs> Lewis. Sure. Lewis is 15th on the list. Good job. 185,000. So before we get back to you, Rob, we have said Williams, Johnson, Smith, Jones, Brown, Jackson, Davis, Robinson, Lewis, and Washington. That's what we've said so far. Okay. All right, Rob. Uh, that gave me some time to, to throw, get some something to think of. Uh, so I'm going to try Harris. Harris is number nine on the list. 264,000. Good job. Mm. Greg. I'm going to stick with the Jays. I'll say Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins is not in the top 20. I was waiting for someone to guess that, though, because that was the first one I thought of. Jenkins is 43rd on the list, 81,000. Zakia. Let's go with the color and say white. White is 14th on the list, 186,000. Good job. All right, Ashley. Let's go with another color and say green. Green is 17th on the list, 159,000. All right, y'all got, y'all got something going here. Rob, take one more stab. Let's not go with a color. <laughs> And I'm going to go with Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, number 20 on the list, 148,000. Just barely. Greg? Uh, I'm going to go with a, a fruit. We'll say Barry. Barry is not in the top 20. However, some of my favorite people are named Barry. I uh, just want to throw that out there. <laughs> not, not, not excluding Marvin Barry. Uh, Barry is 145th on the list. Zakia. I'm going to round it out with another color. And it's the most appropriate color. I'm going to say black. Black. Black is not in the top 20. Uh, it's 152nd, 29,000. And Ashley? Uh, how about Thomas? Thomas is number eight on the list, 293,000. Wow, I thought we had done number eight. Wow. You're missing 11, 12, 13, 16, and 18. Anybody got any more guesses? Next one I was going to do was going to be Wilson. Wilson's number 12. Good job. Anyone else? Is Carter on the list? Not in the top 20. It's okay. 22nd. The only other one I had was Evans. Mm, not in the top 20. It's 37th. Nope. Number 11 is the last name of a legendary Giants linebacker. Taylor. 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 Yep. Mm. Yep. Um, 13. <laughs> you lost me with that one. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not gonna, okay, I'm not going to do sports for all of these, okay? <laughs> Even though there's an obvious one for 13, too, but I'm going to stay away from it. <laughs> um, 13. I think this is the last name of Real Housewives of, of uh, Atlanta. The real messy one. There was a Miss America, Miss USA. More. More. Good job. Yeah. Uh, 16. Try not to use obvious sports references. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen is the is the name of a liquor. There's a there's a liquor with a first and last name. This is the last name of that liquor. Walker. Walker. Good job. Johnny, Johnny Walker. Walker. Yeah. Yeah. I know <laughs> liquor, not actors. <laughs> then eighteen, because I don't want to burn myself out. Uh, is the name of a basketball player that recently returned from two years of injury. For the Tom Golden Thompson. State Warriors, Clay Thompson. Yes, yeah. Thompson's number 18. All right, so that was your warm it up, Chris, question. Do y'all feel warm? Lukewarm. Yeah, lukewarm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> tepid. Yes, tepid. <laughs> so this is episode 358. This is on our main feed. 
Thank you so much for listening. If you want more content like this, you can go to trivia war- trivialwarfare.com where we have over 200 archived episodes. At least one of them should be an earlier version of our Black History Month episode. So please make sure you go check that out. Speaking of Black History Month, this episode we're going to we are celebrating Black History Month. This is going to be released in February. So happy Black History Month to all of you. And like we do every year for Black History Month, this trivia game will feature Uh, All the questions will feature um, Black history. So the teams are going to be Ben and Ashley versus Greg and Zakia. Rob is hosting, and it's time to play the game. Players. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. This is Mr. Literature himself, cordially inviting you to the game. This is six rounds of trivia goodness. Three questions per round. Every right answer gets you 10 points. In the middle, we'll take a pause for the cause and ask a midpoint question worth up to 20 juicy points. After round six, you can wager any or all those points you've been building up and take a shot at the final round. It's a series of theme-based questions we call the gauntlet. It's just that easy, baby. But this game ain't gonna play itself, players. Let's get it on. Take it away, Rob. All right, Robert is in the house. So, here we go. Round one, question one. Our category is money. Uh, Put into circulation in January of 2022, who became the first black woman to appear on the U.S. quarter? Locked in. He's getting Gregor locked in. All right, Ben and Ashley. Yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode that my black card is probably in danger on this episode. So um, (laughs) we'll have to we'll have to work that out. So, Ashley, this isn't obvious to me. I know there was a lot of talk about putting Harriet Tubman on the twenty dollar bill years ago. I do remember seeing a commercial for there was a commercial either that or it was on the news. And it wasn't Harriet Tubman. She was on the 20. I think it's Maya Angelou. Okay. unless I'm completely wrong and it was someone else so it wouldn't think, be like a sojourner truth or anyone like no that. it was someone newer it was not sojourn Ooh, was it i don't think so my my gut is saying my angelou well, i'm not I gonna talk you out of a right answer so if, if that's what your gut's saying let's go with it i'm gonna apologize in advance but i'm that's what my gut is saying and it could be absolutely wrong okay well let's well, we'll go ahead we'll lock in with uh my angelou it's a key and greg Oh uh, yeah, we, we we knew this pretty quickly. Um, I, I believe it's on one of the coins, on the, the back of one of the coins. It is my Angelou. It is the first in the American Women's Quarters Program, which is going to run until 2025. Your correct answer is Maya Angelou. Good job, Ashley. Yeah. That was yeah. <laughs> Thanks for validating us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Black car preserved for now. <laughs> for now. Right. Question two. Robert does absolutely nothing with a hit. (laughs) Uh, So the following is a set of lyrics from a 1980 song. I want you to give me the song title. It is a I will give a bonus two points if you can also give me the artist. Uh, I didn't have anything set up as how I was going to read this. So I'm just going to read this pretty plainly. Uh, So here it goes. Ain't got no car to get around. When I go to work, I've got to go downtown. Now I've missed the train. That's a darn shame. When I'm running late, no sleep's to blame. If you've got a wife, you know I'm right. Got a special man. Well, I can understand. I have a follow-up question. You said it was a 1980s song. Now, did you, I want to make sure I heard it correctly. Is it the year 1980 or the decade 1980s? It is the year 1980. Thank you. Are you able to post those lyrics in the Skype chat? Yes. If you want to post the answer, you can too. But. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure this is not Beyonce. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we are locked in. All right. Ben and Ashley. Man. I guarantee you the conversation y'all had is not as epic as ours. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are going off the rails. On this so so I'm like, okay, 
I'm like, okay. I said, it sounds like that Blondie song where she raps, right? Ashley posts LMAO. Like, <laughs> she was like, oh my God. She was like, wait, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, there is a song where she raps. <laughs> and then I go, who let her rap? <laughs> yeah, it, yes. <laughs> it wasn't very good. It's a classic song for some reason, but I don't know. I can't remember the name of it. <sighs> I do not know. This doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard. Was this a hit or was this just like a random song from the yeah, 80s? I, I, I will simply define as a hit. There is no prefix in front of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. a hit. Can you like hum some of it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, a little bit. Oh, uh, okay. let me see. Um, I don't know, Ben. I have Blondie no is definitely clue. not black. To answer your question, she's not black. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, I don't. That is, I'm like a black person. I don't know if this is gonna work here. All right, so 1980. You know, you that was er, that was early Prince, um, before he blew up pur- for Purple Rain. So 1980, that was like funk era, big time. Gap band, chic. Earth, Wind, and Fire for sure. Um, all those bands. Um, this is like coming right off a of disco, right into the funk era. But these these lyrics are not familiar to me at all. So I'm just gonna say for the sake of time, I'll go with whatever. If you can think of something, because I can't tra- use that this is before I was born that excuse because I love me some Donna Summer. So, but it's yeah. I know this is not her. This is not a Prince song. I would know uh, that if it was. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just going to say Real Love by Blondie. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I got. We're locking in with that. (laughs) All right. Zaki and Greg. Okay. Can I say the Blondie song that you're looking for is Rapture? Rapture. Hang each night in Rapture. The song where she's rapping is called Rapture. Oh, my God. But for our answer... 1980 is interesting because I watched a video last night of this Spinners song and I was like, oh, maybe that's it. But I can't remember the name of the Spinner song. But we had a similar conversation that, yeah, this sounds like, you know, Gap Band or Cool in the Gang. So we went with Party Train by the Gap Band because Train is in the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that's a better guess than ours. So don't, don't be ashamed. <laughs> So I use this song quite a bit when I host trivia, and it's 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 one of my favorites just growing up. My dad actually used to roller skate to it. And so it, when it begins, as it does, it's, it's instrumental. The singer comes on and goes, give me a ho if you got your funky bus oh, fare. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, there's a double dodge bus coming down the street. Moving pretty fast, so kind of shuffle your feet. Yeah. <laughs> My you husband that, is I going to murder me because <laughs> he loves and hates the double Dutch bus. <laughs> the double Dutch bus. <laughs> That song, uh, it is definitely a, a hit. It hit number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, and they're actually, if you've ever seen College Road Trip, apparently Raven Simone did a cover of it. Mm. Uh, but that is Double Dutch Bus by Frankie Smith. Wow. wow. Whizzle, use a blizzard, double the Dutch. There would be no Snoop Dogg without that song. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Question, round one, question three, uh, category is New Heights. Uh, and Dr. Mae Jemison, the first woman of color to go into space, did so aboard what shuttle in 1992? We're locked in. Locked in. All right. Zaki and Greg? Oh, that, was, that was quick. So I have no for sure. It's not Challenger. Not Challenger. I was, make, is maybe, I, know, I remember in Endeavor... But I think maybe that was a little bit later than the nineties. Yeah, Endeavor seems later, but I don't I don't think I have anything better. I was really hoping that Rob was gonna ask the year, because <laughs> I got that. But the actual shuttle, like I don't have anything Endeavor. Is that- Columbia. 
Um, Ooh, no. All these names are really familiar. <laughs> so Discovery is super recent, I think. And I feel like Columbia wasn't manned, was okay. it? And I don't know if Endeavor was, but Endeavor seems better than Columbia. So I don't know. I'm, I'm okay. okay with that if you are. Okay. We, we, could, we, could, we could, I mean, as you can see, I have a, a space shuttle full of nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love I, that. I, I guess so, but we, we could do uh, Endeavor. Okay. We'll lock in with Endeavor. All right. Uh, ben and Ashley, what'd you come up with? Well, my, so, okay, let me shout out to my mom. What's up, mom? I'll probably force her to listen to this show once it comes out. She loves space. She went to, you know, Huntsville and did this like whole like training thing. It was like a teacher thing. She got a space suit from there that she wears every Halloween because that's the coolest thing that she owns, I think. And she can never stop talking about space and she always finds a way to tie in to make it relevant to her students to show them like, you can do anything. Like look at Mae Jemison. And I know she was on the Endeavor. My mom, I mean, everything about space is beaten into my brain. That might be a sword I follow on later if there are more space questions, but I was pretty sure about Endeavor. And that's what we agreed on. All right. So your correct answer is the space shuttle Endeavor. Oh, right. Great, job. Great job. I knew it all along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after round one, Bat and Ashley have 20, and Zaki and Greg have 20. All right, round two, question one, in memoriam. And what actor who passed away in September of 2021 starred in Lovecraft Country, The Night Of, and Community, as well as hosted a Viceland series titled Black Market, journeying into the dangerous world of illicit trade? Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah, we're locked in. All right. It's Key and Greg. Greg, I, I'm I'm thinking this is Michael K. Williams and Rob is like bearing the lead about, you know, him being on the wire and also uh the uh Trapped in the Closet series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is Michael K or Michael Kenneth Williams that I learned. <laughs> By watching an old episode of CSI New York, yeah, I think it's I think it's him. That that's that sounds about right, and that sounds about right timeline wise. Because I know he was around, still he was still around in the early summer. Because I, I think he was part of the tribute to DMX on the mm. BET Awards, and then I, I remember it wasn't that long after that it was really it was revealed that he he passed. So yeah, I'm, that that sounds about right. Okay. So you're locking in with Michael K. Williams? We're locking in with Michael K. Williams. All right. Ben and Ashley. First of all, Zakia will come out with some trap in the closet reference. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some pears? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> like I sat down and watched all 30 episodes of that, and I just wanted I wanted that two hours back. I just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ashley, please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, Omar from The Wire is Michael Michael Williams, Michael K. Williams. I had to think about it for a minute, and I was like, yeah. I know there was someone that died recently, and I know they were on The Wire. I couldn't really point to any of the other things, but it was around the same time, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is it. He's on CSI. He was on The Wire. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this is it. So, yeah, yep. we agree. Yep. Yep. And he was on Law & Order. Uh, and he was on quite a few other things. And I mean, as it's been said, you come at the king, you better not miss. That is Michael K. Williams. I don't know if Ashley ever actually said our answer, but we we did answer Michael yeah, K. Williams. Yeah, she did. Okay, good. Okay. Did. It was wrapped up in there. I like to ramble. Please stop me sometimes. I can't <laughs> control myself. She, she said it. All right. Round two. Question two is on literature. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's better. All right. What book was adapted to a film which won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for Regina King? I think we're locking in. Okay. Think or are? <laughs> we are I locking think. in. Okay. I see his death. So. <laughs> okay. I just, want, I, I just want confirmation. All right. Uh, ben and Ashley. All right, Ashley. So are you familiar with Regina King? 
I am. Okay. I am familiar with who she is. So she got I'm her big break on two two seven. Yep, she was very young. Um, then. Yeah, she was. She was a teenager. I know she was an enemy of the state. I'm pretty sure she did not win an award for that. She played the HR person on Big Bang Theory, but that's obviously not a film. I can't recall any movies that she was in recently. If I'm being completely honest, I cannot either. I think she was in an episode of Black Lady Sketch Show. Um, if you guys watch that, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to this. I can't pull anything out of anywhere for this one. I don't. I'm sorry, Ben. It's a book adapted into a film. <sighs> I kind of want to say, like, was it is it was it the butler? Is that what the name of that that had um, crazy eyes in it? What's his name? Oh, what's what's the man's name? Oh, he's in like everything. <sighs> I cannot think of his name, but he has like a lazy eye. I, that's what I know. He has a lazy eye. The oh guy that was God. in the Last King of London or Last King of Scotland or whatever. Uh, yeah. Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker, yes. Can't believe I said London. Um, yeah, Scotland. Uh, I'm trying to think. Was he? The, he? Well, he wasn't the butler in that though, was he? I th- was he? I don't know. My black car is just dangling over fire right now. <laughs> oh my god! I know somebody's about to come collect mine too. I do not know. I don't I've, know. I want to say I feel like this may possibly. Oh, wait a minute. I don't watch current movies. I don't know if this was a period piece or not. Like, you know, the butler would have been a period piece. The help was a period piece. I don't know. Was she in 12 Years a Slave? I didn't I didn't see that either. I don't think she was. Ooh, was she? Oh, wouldn't that be embarrassing if she was? I don't think she was. Yeah. You do want do you want to just go with the butler? I I feel like we have a little bit of something on that. Are you used to be are you saying it used to be a book? It was or, a book adapted into a film. That seems likely. Twelve Years a Slave was definitely a book adapted into a film also. But I did not see that movie. I did read the synopsis of it, but I don't recall her being part of the cast. So she could have been. <sighs> she could have been part of the cast. I feel better about Twelve Years a Slave than The Butler. I will. Su- I can support that one. I know that was like a very like highly acclaimed movie. Right. You want to just go with that? Yeah. Was, well, yeah. We're going to lock in with 12 Years a Slave. All right. Uh, so, Key and Greg. All right. I, I think this may have come out maybe about four or five years ago. I know it was, it was definitely before the the unprecedented times we're in now. I, I, I'm starting to doubt the wording of it, but I think um, it was, we, we went locked in with If Beale Street Could Talk. All right. Well, the movie did come out in 2018. She won the Academy Award the subsequent year. Uh, and the book was written by James Baldwin called If Beale Street Could Talk. Mm. I w- there's no way I was getting there. Yeah, no, me either. No, sorry. Nope, didn't, didn't see that one. Regina King is like, not to make a, a pun, like Regina Queen, but she's like <laughs> queen in uh, my, my parents' household. They, they love Regina. <laughs> yeah. And she does a wonderful Huey and Riley for sure. Yeah. Yes, she does. Oh my God. I, forgot, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> All right. It's round two, question three. This one is called Essential Toys. American inventor, aerospace engineer, and entrepreneur Lonnie Johnson created what toy, which released in 1990, six years before it was modified to fire projectiles? I, th- I think we can lock in. All right. Uh, ben and Ashley. Yeah, Ashley, it was a Super Soaker, right? Yep, it was. Yeah, we're locked in with Super Soaker. All right, locked in with Super Soaker. Uh, Zaki and Greg. We also locked in with Super Soaker. Your correct answer is the Super Soaker. Well done. Just as a side note, Zakia, when are you auditioning to do voice acting? Like, you, you could be the Cree Summer of your generation. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have never considered it. Um, I love Cree Summer though. She's a maze. Um, but the only real like voice outside of my own voice that I do decently is Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Gollum. And I feel like I'm required to do it now. Yeah, of course you yes, are. Of course. Let's take those precious. Trixie Herbert's. 
Yeah. You, yes. you have to you have to put the cough in there too. The <laughs> 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 You gotta work oh on that. God. Yeah, I gotta work on the cough, but all right. So two fun facts, you know, in in you know, in danger of giving away future answers. Cree Summer's first voice acting role was actually Penny on the original Inspector Gadget. Had no idea that was her until recently. I did not know that either. Really? Um, and then totally unrelated to Cree Summer, um, Panthro from the Thundercats. I always have told people Panthro was the black Thundercat. Like just I just believed it in my heart. <laughs> Turns out he was voiced by the guy who did Grandpa Huxtable on the Cosby Show, so he actually was black. <laughs> Legit. I love that. Wow. Yeah, that's my tangent for the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still, and and I guess you throw that in there. Just a shout out to James Avery. You know, our, our, the, the, the shredder of our time. Oh yes, yes. Shout out to James Without a doubt. Avery. Recipes. All right. So after round two, Ben and Ashley have 40. Zakia and Greg have 50. Round three. Question one is on television. The characters Overton, Wakefield Jones, and Kyle Barker were supporting characters on what 1990s TV sitcom? I have Meow Meows. I think you and I might be thinking about the same thing. Yep. You want to lock in? Oh, yes. wait, let me, yep, okay. Yeah, we're locked in. All right, locked in. Saki and Greg. Can I sing a little bit? I mean. We are living <laughs> single. Ooh, in a 90s kind of world. I'm glad I got my girls. I'm not going to even try and rap, but yeah. <laughs> Keep your head up. What? Keep your head up. That's right. <laughs> Never this fight. We talk. We got to fight. We're home girls standing to my left to my and my right. We true. Tight like glue. Like glue. We are living single. <laughs> 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 oh, that show was great. So great. Yes, yeah, so I, locking in living single. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> ben and Ashley. I, I think it's pretty obvious what <laughs> what our answer was. I, uh, yeah, I, as soon I, as I heard Overton and Kyle, I was like, oh, yeah. yes. Kyle yeah. and Maxine. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Living single was our was our answer. All right. The correct answer is in fact living single. <laughs> my wife yeah. has been binge watching the entire series this past two weeks. It's so great. It's so great. I I, I try to explain to people when folks talk about Friends in the nineties as a show they were watching Friends and Seinfeld. I'm like, I was watching Martin and Living Single, which are way better than those two <laughs> sitcoms. I don't know what y'all talking about right now. Yep. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Round three, question two on statues. In April of 2020, the first statue featuring real life women was erected in New York's Central Park and featured Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and what abolitionist? Can you repeat the names again? Yes. Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and what abolitionist? All right. We're locked in. All right, Zaki and Greg. We were, we were right. We were just about to lock in ourselves. I, I, I we were wavering between uh, Sojourn Truth and Ida B. Wells, but I think we're going to go with Sojourn Truth. Yeah, yeah. I like like so Sojourn Truth did the ain't I, ain't I a woman speech to those ladies, but. I think later in the suffrage thing, it was Ida B. Wells who was like, I'm not going to, you know, march with you guys because you don't want suffrage for black women. So, but the abolitionist part makes me think Sojourner Truth. So I I think that's good to lock in with Sojourner Truth. So guess we're locked in with Sojourner Truth. All right. Ben and Ashley. I remember seeing like when they unveiled this statue, it's, Sojourner Truth sitting at the table with Elizabeth Stanton talking, and then like um, Susan B. Anthony is like also there, but not sitting at the table. I distinctly remember it was Sojourner Truth. So right. yeah, pretty sure on that. All right, well you've got it pretty much lined up with the statue. It is Sojourner Truth. All right, it's round three, question three. It's the cat's meow. American playwright and screenwriter Katori Hall won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama for the play The Hot Wing King and is also known for what hit series, which premiered on Stars in 2020? Okay. 
<laughs> she, apparently, Ashley has like five and a half meow meows on this, so we're locked in. Oh, I've got all. <laughs> this is so appropriate to have all the meow meows here. <laughs> we're locked in. <laughs> all right. So, Key and Greg. So we're 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 struggling a little bit on this one. Um, it's not power because power debuted earlier than that. It's not Survivor's Remorse, but I think there is a power spinoff uh, called Ghost, and I think that debuted in 2020, something like that. Um, that that's about as strong of a, of a of a close to a meow meow as I have. I have like a quarter of a meow. And I trust Greg because I don't have stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll lock in with Ghost. All right. It's Ben and Ashley, what do you got? It's all Ashley. This one is down in the valley where the girls get naked. Nope, no one. Okay. Um, no. So <laughs> I don't have stars right, so this, either. <laughs> this, this, show is, uh, this show is called P Valley, and there's a place in memphis called p i'm from memphis so i kind of geek out on everything that they 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 reference chuckalisa which is like a native american settlement there and they talk about getting crystals and i was like oh my god if someone says anything about crystals i'm going to drive 12 hours back home just to go get some (laughs) i yeah when you said p valley i'm sorry not when you said cats meow and stars i was like i'm pretty sure the p stands for cats meow and this is what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure this is what it is. Pretty sure it's P-Valley. And your correct answer, because it is the cat's meow. It is P-Valley. Because <laughs> mm. we are not going for the, re- the full title. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so, so <laughs> the actual title is a word that we cannot say. No, the actual show is called P-Valley. Oh, but called we all P-Valley. know what P-Valley is. We all know Oh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. We know. <laughs> okay. We know. We know. We, we know like OPP. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you clearly know me. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great. after round three, Ben and Ashley have 70. Zakia and Greg also have 70. That is going to take us into our midpoint question. This is, category well generally we will just say it is music your question paul mccartney currently ranks second in total grammy nominations for five points each i need you to name the other four individuals who are in the top five so i'm assuming by individuals we're excluding bands or groups correct rob are these (laughs) <laughs> this is going to sound like a really stupid question. Are these black individuals or just just individuals? They are blackity black black as black and black. And black. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they are so black midnights like, damn. <laughs> so we have to name all. You said there were five and we have to name all five. I just want to uh, be clear. There are there are four. Four. And it's it's five points for each one. Okay, I, I think we are we, we are locked in. All right, uh, Ben and Ashley. So I think Ashley is kind of schooling me on this. I know that a few years back, it may have been me that asked a question about Grammy winners, and I remember Beyonce and Rihanna either getting close to or passing Aretha with Grammy wins. And I think Aretha has somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 wins. Now, Ashley, you say that Beyonce has like 80 nominations. Beyonce is like up there noms. Like she's Queen B for a reason, you right. know? So that's, right. that's, I, my first immediate thought was Beyonce. My next immediate thought was Jay Z. Mm-hmm. They're sort of a power couple. Jay Z was kind of like, he was, when I think of like original uh, story, like storytellers in in the rap game, and like people that had this sort of like uh, this like talent for storytelling in in rap form, you the, one of the originators of that I think was Jay Z. He has a lot, uh, a couple of albums that that were highly acclaimed in like the the late '90s and early 2000s. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of collaborative work with other artists. 
they're sort of a power sure. couple together, Jay Z and Beyonce. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm very sure about Beyonce. I'm pretty mm. sure about Jay Z. Okay. You said Rihanna. I'm not super I know she has sure a lot about. Of wins. She has a lot of wins. I'm not so sure about her. I'm willing to go with it. Okay. But I'm not a hundred percent on her. We thought about Aretha Franklin for a little bit, but I don't think Aretha Franklin had enough noms to compete okay. with like the level we're we're talking with with Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, um, I can go with that. You mentioned Stevie Wonder. I did. Um, He's. I mean, everyone loves Stevie Wonder. He has. Uh, I mean. Well, he's still making music. He's still making music. Has when I think of a super hit, whenever whenever Ben murders a hit, I'm thinking like, is this Stevie Wonder level hit, right? <laughs> Especially if it's like pre '90s, very popular, still very popular. I don't know though. I think he may be more popular in a way of noms than Aretha Franklin. I'm just wondering, do we is there do we have like a Nicki Minaj sneaking in there in the back door? I don't think we have a Nicki Minaj anywhere in the in the vicinity. Okay. I, first of all, I'm not throwing shade, guys. I love Nicki Minaj. Please don't get on TWA's Facebook Man. page and be like, who is this? No, I love no. I love Nicki Minaj. Don't um, worry about that. <laughs> I don't think she's anywhere close though to I, I'm just trying to set the bar here at Beyonce. That's that's all I'm okay. trying to do. So in the interest of time, I think we can go Beyonce, Jay Z, Rihanna, and Stevie. I, I accept. Let's let's do it. All right, we'll lock in with those four answers. Okay. Zaki so and Greg. Oh, didn't even think about Aretha Franklin. I, I'm not yeah, Aretha was so good, right? Yeah. <laughs> um. So so the first the, the first one that came to mind immediately was Quincy Jones. Um. I, I know he's way up there with wins. So I, I figure you know he's up there with wins. He's probably up there with nominations as well. We then we also went with uh, Michael Jackson. I figured that that it's another situation where you know he was quite successful in his in his in his heyday. I, I then thought that after that is probably people that are more recent because there are more categories now. Uh, so again, we, we, missed, we, missed, we immediately thought of Beyonce in that situation. And I think the more I think about it, the more I think that Beyonce may be a safer answer than Quincy Jones even. She might be number one. Then we start to you know, waver a little bit on what, what else, what, the other answer we had, I think we mentioned Drake, we mentioned... Um, Jesus or Ye or Kanye or whatever he's calling himself now, and uh, but, but then we got kind of phased them out, and then we uh, we went with Stevie Wonder, so we went with uh, Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, and Stevie Wonder. So a couple that are out of the top five uh, at 18th with 49 is Babyface, just outside of the top five in sixth. Tied at 74 is Stevie Wonder. Mm. So your correct answers, number one on the list with 83 is Mm. Jay-Z. Number three on the list with 80, Quincy Jones. Mm. Number four with 79 nominations, Beyonce. And number five, with 75 nominations, it's yay. It's wow. Kanye West. What is Kanye? Poor Rihanna didn't even make the top so five. so sorry, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's okay. It's okay. I, I talked you out of two correct answers. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I didn't even think about Kanye. Me either. Makes I perfect sense, think though. think about him. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And man, Quincy Jones, my mother would be so upset with me if she knew I missed a Quin- uh, opportunity of Quincy Jones is the correct answer. Didn't didn't cross my mind either, Quincy Jones. <laughs> Quincy Jones can't help y'all. <laughs> well, there was a big Sorry. dust up about Quincy Jones on like Twitter like a couple days ago because Timbaland said, "Oh, Quincy Jones didn't get big until Thriller," and like who wants to tell him <laughs> that he's had like wow. uh, several Grammy noms and wins before you know Thriller was a thing? So yeah, Quincy well. was fresh on the brain for me too. Well, there it was. All right. So after the midpoint, we still have a tie. Ben and Ashley have 80. Zaki and Greg have 80. Round four. Question one, category, it's in the game. Featured in the Netflix limited series documentary High Score, Jerry Lawson 
is considered to be the father of what video game innovation first used in 1976? Well, we are locked in. All right. Saki and Greg. Oh, all right. Uh, this is a little tough one. I said, well, when the one thing I'm, uh, I'm leaning for, well, I guess, trying to use is you, the category was it's in the game. And that's a tagline from EA Sports. Um, I, I definitely remember those commercials for like Madden and NBA Live. Besides that, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So I've definitely heard the name Jerry Lawson. And I definitely remember watching a YouTube video about black scientists and black science adjacent people or black people in technology. And they talked about uh, someone creating something for a video game. And I cannot remember what it is. My knee jerk was VR, but like 1976 seems like a little early for VR. And then like, is it something like joystick or like at home consoles? But high score makes me think of like arcade machines. Just by go and I haven't seen high score, but I would like arcade machines. Yeah, that that seems like maybe that 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 seems like a reasonable guess to me. That that sounds good, and that sounds about right as far as timeline. Yeah, we 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 can go with that. So I guess that's arcade, you know, arcade machines. Is that that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll, we'll lock in with arcade machine. Ben and Ashley. It's all Ashley. Oh, man. Okay, so I saw this documentary, and Jerry Lawson used to work for this company called Fairchild, and he invented, because they had a console, and I forget the name of the console, maybe like the Fairchild something, I don't know. But he invented the first video game cartridge and got, like, no love for it. And then other companies started, like, you know, biting the cartridge thing and Nintendo got really big with it. And I, I know that that's what it is. It's gotta be video game cartridges, right? That's what we locked in with. Mm. So he did have a, uh, a console with, with his group it was called the channel F console. Uh, but it didn't really take off and, and wasn't popularized until Atari 2600 in 1977. And there was a YouTube video on it as well, Zakia. your correct answer is the game cartridge. Wow. Yeah, the minute you said cartridge, like that, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Wow. Round four, question two on sports. The NBA Sportsmanship Award given to a player who most exemplifies the ideas of sportsmanship on the court with ethical behavior, fair play, and integrity is named after what Hall of Fame player who was the first to win the award? Uh, three meow meows were locked in. And last year, locked in. It's a key and Greg. Oh, my goodness. So many. Greg, you seem like the sports guy. I can throw out names and you can tell me <laughs> <laughs> if they sound good or not. Okay. Okay. I, I, I well, I, I definitely, definitely narrow it down to NBA players. That helps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, my, my, my I want. I'm just. I guess my main worry is. I guess the question is, how old is this award? And mm. this feels. I think this has been. It's been around for at least. You know, at least a decade. Okay. So, so it's not like a very recent person. And I guess it wouldn't be any by then because it's Hall of Famer. My, my first thought is maybe Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I, I like that. My knee jerk was Tim Duncan. Because, I, I don't know, he just seems like a nice guy. That's <laughs> <laughs> has such bad reasoning. There's part of me that, like, and this, is, this might be my Detroit bias coming out. And there are conflicting reports of whether this, this guy was, like, nice or not. But Isaiah Thomas came to mind for me. I, I can just keep naming Pistons, Jerry Stackhouse, <laughs> Joe Dumars, Grant Hill, <laughs> all Pistons all the time. That, but, uh, that Grant Hill, that that might be that might be one. I'm just, I'm just wondering, is he in the Hall of Fame? I mean, I think he should be. If he had some injuries that kind of hurt his career, but Grant Hill, I like that. I 
I mean, I don't mind Grant Hill, but do I like him more than Tim Duncan? I'm, I'm really just going over like basketball players that I think are nice, <laughs> <laughs> who seem like good sports all the time. And like, I, I guess to me, it's I always think Tim Duncan. The, the, my only issue with uh, it be, the answer being Tim Duncan is that Duncan retired only about like five or six years ago. So he right. Would, so I, I, I feel that the, the, that award is probably older than that. Mm. And, mm. I, and, I, and my guess is they probably didn't name a sportsmanship award off of someone who was still active. Got it. Um, Maybe we should consider the source here. We've got Rob, who is a Detroiter. <laughs> ben seemed to know it really fast, and we know that he's a Pistons, like he's an 89 Pistons guy. There's there's a chance it could be a piston. I can tell you what pistons is not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not um, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah, no. Or um, my personal favorite, Rick Mahorn. Uh, Joe Dumars might be. That might be. Yeah, Joe Dumars also seems like you know, like a a nice guy, humanitarian. Seems like he cares about other people. So um, if there's a, a nice guy pissed in, Joe Dumars comes to mind. Chauncey Billups comes to mind, too. But I think it probably Joe Dumars. And he's hasn't been playing in a long time. So it's reasonable that uh, something will be named after him. I'm liking the Joe Dumars answer more and more. Okay. Um, I, you know what? I, I, let's do it. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, we could get it wrong, but we won't die. It's fine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so let's, uh, we'll lock in with Joe Dumars. Ben and Ashley, what do you have? So, Ashley, this is why they pick Zakia to go on Jeopardy because she's able to pick up on clues, right? She knows that Rob's from Detroit. She knows I'm an 89 Pistons fan. First of all, he won, in this, he won the award so many times that they did, he think he won like three or four years in a row, and they decided just to name it after him. And the irony is that he was part of the Bad Boys, which was one of the most physical, meanest <laughs> teams in the history of basketball, and he was a nice guy on that team. Uh, we are talking about number four, Joe Dumars. All right, won the award in the 1995-96 season. It's inaugural uh, sportsmanship award. Your correct answer is Joe Dumars. Good job, Zakia. Well, thank you. I believe I think this to is... this to this date, he is still the only piston to have won the award. <laughs> yeah, it's not a surprise. <laughs> I think this is an appropriate time to reveal my hoodie, which is Oh, she's got a bad boy hoodie on. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I still have the um, the free press did a thing called Bad Boys. It was like a magazine they did when they won. I still have that magazine in my house somewhere. I, I, I think somewhere in my parents' house, we still have. Uh, it was definitely one of those we're, we're calling the shot now, like pulling the Babe Ruth, and it had the three peat beat shirt oh. after they went went back to back. And they were already making three peat beat shirts before. I think it was even before the season even started. <laughs> mm. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and they would have won too if it wasn't for that meddling Michael Jordan. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, round four, question three: the Academy. And to date, Quavenjane Wallace is the youngest actress ever to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress. Earning the nod for what film? Can you spell the first name? Yes, it is Q U V E N Z H A N E with an accent. <laughs> of course. We're locked in with all the thunder. Okay. Ben and Ashley. Yeah. Actually, this seems recent, like the last 10 years. I just have no idea what movie it was before. Yeah, I. Um kind of don't pay attention to movies i wish i had something i don't so i know that um gabory sidibe was nominated for precious and one i think and she would have been in her teen in her teens but i think this this girl i think she was like elementary school i think she was like seven eight nine that range when she won, because I remember reading an article about a girl and they were talking about how she had her acceptance speech on her 
on her iPhone that was like bedazzled in pink or something like that. And this could be totally unrelated to what this question is, but <laughs> I'm trying to get there. Yeah, I don't keep, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know. She's a young girl. She would have to have played some young role in a what? very popular movie. You said did you say what what award she was nominated for? Best actress. Best, Best actress. actress. Okay, so Academy she had to be, Award. She had to be leading. This is not the girl that plays in Blackish, right? That's not her. That's somebody else, right? Yeah, I don't I don't think that's her. Yeah, that's somebody else. She would have played a lead role in a movie. A young black girl playing a lead role in a movie. Like, Ooh. would it be Eve's Bayou? That's probably not her, right? She wasn't the lead in that role. She wasn't the lead in that movie. I'm trying to think of like movies that that feature young women of color. You already said Precious. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <sighs> I'm. When they say their answer is going to be obvious, but it's not coming to me right now. I wouldn't know. I'm sorry. I wish I could be more help. I, I really do. I don't have it. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go on a tank a little bit here because I'm pretty sure this was in the last, I'm fairly certain this is in the last 10 years. I, I'm tempted to guess a Tyler Perry film, but I know Rob's disdain for Tyler Perry. <laughs> and so I, I highly doubt he would ask a question in that in that realm. I, I haven't been on in two years. I, yeah, I could have changed. <laughs> <laughs> mm, not likely. Uh, <laughs> I don't no. know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so sorry. So you you mentioned a movie at the very precious. No, e- no. Eased by you. Eve's Bayou. When did that come out? Do you remember? Night in the nineties. St- uh, Angela know. Bassett was in it. I don't think she, I don't think the girl was the lead. Even though the uh, she was the Eve in Eve's Bayou, I don't think she was. I don't think she was the lead actress. But I don't think we have anything better. I would go with that. I don't have anything. I'm sorry. All right, we'll lock in with Eve's Bayou. Saki and Greg. Ooh, you guys tap danced around some stuff. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Quibinjane Wallace did play Annie in a movie with Jamie Foxx. That's right. But that's not what she won for. And the movie she did win for is not Eve's Bayou, but it's kind of like Bayou themed. It's a really sad movie, and she's a little girl that has to save her dying daddy. It's Beasts of the Southern Wild. All right, it's never heard she, of it. Uh, was never heard of the, that. I believe at the time of nomination, she was nine years, 135 days old, uh, which puts her a little more than four years younger than the next youngest person, She's also, uh, if if I have this correct, she's also the first and still only person born in the 21st century to be nominated for an acting Oscar. Uh, your correct answer is Beast of the Southern Wild. Wow. I, I've never even heard of that before. Me either. Very limited release. I think it actually, it was it was one of the Netflix movies. And then they released it in theaters to make sure that it would be eligible for an Academy Award. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. So after round four, Ben and Ashley have 100. Zakia and Greg, 100. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> round five, question one School days is your category. Cheney University, founded in 1837, is the oldest historically black college and is located in what state? Can you spell it? C H E Y. N E Y. Okay, we are locked in. All right. Saki and Greg. How did I have a feeling that Rob or somebody was going to bring up Cheney University? <laughs> <laughs> because it is the oldest. I, I know it's in the north because <laughs> Clark is the oldest one in the south. Clark Atlanta is the oldest one in the south. So Cheney, I want to say it's either Massachusetts or Pennsylvania. I, I, I was I was leaning towards Pennsylvania. Okay, I know Lincoln is in Pennsylvania, so yeah, I, I, let's go with Pennsylvania. All right, locking in Pennsylvania. Okay, 
Ben and Ashley. I just couldn't help with during when Zakia was talking. Like, I know this is the oldest in the North because Clark's oldest in the South. I'm like, really? You don't think Alabama had any HBCUs in the 1830s? I wonder why. <laughs> 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 Seems plausible to me. But go ahead, Ashley. <laughs> yep the the oldest historically black college is is Cheney University in Pennsylvania. All right. Cheney is about 20 miles west of Philadelphia. It is Pennsylvania. Great job. All right. Good job. All right. It's round five. Question two on magazines. And in 2020, Dario Calmis became the first black photographer to shoot a cover of what magazine? First published in 1913 by Condé Nast. The July-August 2020 issue featured Viola Davis on the cover. All right, we're locked in. Zaki and Greg? So I was thinking it was Vogue, and then you mentioned Viola Davis was on the cover. And I'm like, oh, mm, because my first thought was the uh, Kamala Harris Vogue cover with her in like the the chucks and people were like oh that's such an ugly cover she deserves better but like Vogue is the only thing that I can think of I know it's a Condé Nast uh, publication is it old as 1913 yeah that that's my only concern um, but yeah. if, but if it isn't then I'm I'm struggling to think of what other magazine would be uh, maybe Vanity Fair. For some reason, I've, it, 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 this is not any kind of you know knowledge, but Vogue sounds like it's an older magazine than Vanity Fair. I don't I know. I don't have any reason why. But <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it's the opposite opposite way. I think Vanity Fair seems older than Vogue, but I think this is because there's an old like English novel Vanity Fair, and I I might be like conflating those two. Is Vogue? As old as 1913 is the real question. And has Viola Davis ever been on the cover of Vogue? Maybe backing up, when I think of the, like the black photographer um, and who has been on the cover of Vogue, I don't know if Kamala's, Kamala Harris's cover was shot by a black photographer. I know Beyonce has talked about making sure that she is... Uh, shot by black photographers, but I don't know if she's been on a Vogue cover recently. I, I think it's still out there. I just, I don't know. I also don't know if Vanity Fair is a Condé Nast publication. And please stop me, Greg, because I feel like I am <laughs> rambling off little bits of information. Um, I'm, I'm trying to just take, in, trying to take all the pieces of information, see if I can turn that into something. My, my Another wonder I have is, is either Vogue or Vanity Fair more likely to have actresses on their cover? I'm not sure mm. if there's like, and, I, and, I, and when I think of Vanity Fair, I think usually they have a lot of group shots on their cover and not as many yes. solo cover, uh, I guess cover artists. Um, so, may, so maybe Vogue is a better choice. That that is an astute observation. Vanity Fair does have a lot of like group shots, and uh, I think, well, I don't know if Vogue goes for more heavy hitters, but I, I mean Viola Davis is everything, so I'm okay with leaning in toward Vogue with high doubt or not high doubt, but just like yeah, feeling weird about 1913, but everything is older than I think it is anyway. So I can I can be okay with Vogue. After the last few years, everything feels like it was 100 years ago anyway. So yeah. I, I, I okay, we, we we can say we'll say Vogue. Okay. All right, Ben and Ashley. It's all Ashley again. I know Viola Davis wore that purple dress on the cover of Vanity Fair. <laughs> I remember that. I love Viola Davis. Beautiful, beautiful magazine cover. That's that's what we went with. Your correct answer is Vanity Fair. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I did look it up though, Zakia. Yeah, Vogue is actually older than Vanity Fair. And it is a Condé Nast magazine. So you were right about that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So after the longest bathroom break in the history of trivial warfare. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had some extenuating circumstances, so we had to take about a 27-hour break. 
Um, but we are back. So I believe we had just finished round five, question two. Is that correct, Rob? That is correct. Okay. So, Rob, I'll, so, I'll leave it over to you. Round five, question three. This is on debuts. Your question. Prior to the to- 2018 success of Black Panther, what 2013 film was the directorial debut for Ryan Coogler? The star of this film was also a member of the Black Panther cast. All right, I think we are locked in. All right, Ben and Ashley. Oh boy, Ashley. All right, so yeah, movies. I again am probably the worst person on earth when it comes to actors and movies in general. I do not. I, I mean, you you had a thought. Yeah. Well, I'm something. Th- I know twenty third. I'm trying to think of twenty thirteen where I was. So I know that was the year that Blur Lines came out, the song, because I only know that because my wife and I vac- did our anniversary in Las Vegas, and everywhere we went, we could not get away from that song. <laughs> so I'm trying to think what movies would have come out around that time. So if we're thinking about, and of course I can't, re- I can't think of the name of the main actor from Black Panther. Just I cannot. Oh, you mean Chadwick Boseman? Chadwick Boseman. Oh my God, I could not. I could not think of his name for anything in the world. Rest in peace. Oh, yeah, rest in peace. So I, if I had to guess, I would think that this is either going to be a Chadwick Boseman movie, a Michael B. Jordan movie, or a Forrest Whitaker movie, right? So when I think Chadwick Boseman, 42 is is probably around that time. That was when he played Jackie Robinson. It might be earlier than that, though. I can't think of anything prominent by Michael B. Jordan or Forrest Whitaker. It would have been too early for Creed which I think was like Michael B. Jordan's kind of breakthrough role in terms of mainstream actor. Um, I think 2013 would have been too early for that. You know, Forrest Whitaker has been in a bunch of stuff. I'm just not pulling any, any movies featuring black actors or actresses. Now also Angela Bass was in, in that movie. So I don't know if it would have been something with her in it, but um, um, right now, my only, my best guess I have right now is 42. 42. What was 42 about? I'm sorry. That was, was the that Jackie about? Jackie Robinson the story. Jackie Robinson story. Uh, I haven't seen the movie, but that is the earliest of all the films I can that we've discussed so far. You want to go with that? I I honestly don't know. I am not going to be helpful at all. <laughs> mm. I'm so sorry. Uh let's go with let's go with it. Let's go with 42 and see. Okay. We'll lock in 42. All right. Saki and Greg. So uh, Greg and I were talking and Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan are like peanut butter and jelly. Like they go together <laughs> like always. <laughs> so Greg and I were thinking, is this Fruitvale Station or is this Creed? Creed did seem a little bit early, but we were both sure that Ryan Coogler and Creed went together rather than Fruitvale Station. So we went with Creed. That was Creed. All right, so this movie was a biographical film which starred Michael B. Jordan based on events leading to the death of Oscar Grant. Your correct answer, which is named for the location where it happened on the Bay Area Rapid Transport System, is Fruitvale Station. No! Wow. (laughs) Wow. You were there, went to the wrong movie. Yeah. You got off on the wrong stop of Fruit Wheel. Wrong stop. So bad. <laughs> All right. So after round five, Ben and Ashley have 120. Zakia and Greg have 110. The lead has changed. Okay. Round six, question number one, which is on science. 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 Your question, the ball method developed by chemist Alice Ball served as an effective treatment in the early 20th century of what infectious disease? You said early 20th century? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, we are locked in. All right. Oh, no. no, no. (laughs) We were were struggling because uh, we wanted to lock in first so we wouldn't have to Talk about how much we didn't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss on this one. 
like I told you, Greg, my mom is a chemist and she's going to kill me. (laughs) That's all (laughs) I can think of right now. Like maybe like what infectious disease actually has a treatment? Because not every infectious disease has a treatment. Right. So like it's not a flu or um, maybe it's something bacterial, but ball method. So I don't think that's like a particular antibiotic. So like what can be treated with a method? So maybe it's viral. I I mean, would it be like something like smallpox or I I don't, I don't know. So anything bacterial can be treated with antibiotics. Viruses don't have a cure. So I'm guessing this is probably something that maybe didn't have a vaccine in the early 20th century and they needed a way to treat it like pneumonia or like um like viral pneumonia or tuberculosis the consumption <laughs> <laughs> for for not any real reason I, I like tuberculosis a little more than pneumonia okay um, yeah let's go with tb all, all right we're in with tb <laughs> lock it in Zakia and greg with the consumption Ben and Ashley, I, I love how Zakia just locked in like with that Alabama train. The, the assumption. <laughs> she got an assumption. <laughs> it's like the sugar. You <laughs> only got the sugar. <laughs> All right. Um, Ashley, you you had a gut feeling about this, so I'll let you talk about it. I, I did. And I just want to say, like, I, I love how cute they tried to make tuberculosis sound back in the day. Like, Oh, it's just a little, just a little, little cough, little, little tuber, little assumption, right? Like it's a horrible disease. <laughs> yeah. Why, why you would try to like make that cute? I have no idea. But I knew it was some sort of like necrotizing disease. I thought it was. I was bouncing some ideas around with Ben, and I was like, my gut said leprosy, but I also immediately went to plague, and I was trying to think of like something where people die a really slow and horrible, nasty death. And I know it was something, my, my gut just went to leprosy for some reason. I don't know if it's right. I, I have a feeling that it's right, but I know it's something really dark and nasty. And I think it, if it's not, if it ends up being plague, I am so sorry. We locked, we locked in with, we locked in with leprosy, but if it's, if it's plague, I'm very sorry, Ben. No, oh, you're fine. I'm sorry. I'm just going to, yeah, let's just go with, we, 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 went, we went with leprosy. <laughs> leprosy. All right. So she developed the technique back when she was only 23 years old. And it was a technique to inject uh, Calmugra oil into patients. Unfortunately, she died a year later and her research was then stolen. And that person tried to take credit for it, which thankfully was fixed with history. But your correct answer, that injection was used to help people treat leprosy. Oh, my God. Oh, Good job. Wow. Great that's amazing. I, I almost made some sort of umbop reference on this category because it's also known as Hansen's disease. Oh. But I really wasn't <laughs> going to go there. Ooh, I don't know yeah. if I would have gotten it if you had. You would have got some groans on that one, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Question six, round six, question two. Uh, this is on awards. What is the title of the 2017 album which won the Pulitzer Prize for Music and was the first non-jazz or non-classical work to win the award? Locked in. Yep. You're okay. locked in. Ben and Ashley. Oh, crap. Okay. Right. Ben, you know I know music. Okay, good. I type so slow. I'm pretty sure this is Damn by Kendrick Lamar. Okay. It's one of the Kendrick albums. I'm pretty sure it's Damn. Okay. Can I say that on this podcast? Because if yes. I can't, then it's probably not the name. Of, that's probably not the correct answer. Yes, you it can may absolutely be, say Damn. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, if I'm, if I'm going to get bleeped, that's probably not the right answer. No, uh, you won't get bleeped. Now, if you say <laughs> Damn, you get bleeped. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got bleeped there. <laughs> yeah, 2000s. Kendrick is a lyrical genius very good storyteller and by very good i mean a, a superb storyteller i know he was 
uh, it was really like talked about when he got his, his Pulitzer for this album. And there had already been some some uh, people talking before this about Section 80 and um, you know the other albums he came out with be- before Damn. But this this album won him the Pulitzer. I know that. Yep, let's go with that. That definitely sounds familiar. I know that he has been critically acclaimed for his music. So when you typed Kendrick, that seemed very reasonable to me. So you want to lock in? Damn. Yes, let's do it. We will, we will lock in with Damn. All right, Zaki and Greg. Oh yeah, we we were pretty on pretty quickly. Um, I, I'm pretty sure "To Pimp a Butterfly" was 2015 or 2016, so before that. But yeah, we went with "Sorry, Mom." Damn. <laughs> <laughs> "To Pimp a Butterfly" was a damn good album, but your correct answer is "Damn." <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ron Simmons, aka Farouk. <laughs> The main reason why I put that question in there, because I wanted to say, damn. (laughs) (laughs) So satisfying. Indeed. Question three in round number six is the showdown. So I have a showdown question. Hopefully this is going to work right. But of course, for the showdown, and Ben can correct me if I have this wrong, but for this question, there's going to be multiple answers. Each team is going to be given three minutes to create a list of answers. Uh, obviously, the team with the most correct answers will get the 10 points, and I believe if a team gets an answer incorrect, then they will be disqualified, and the points will go to the other team. So, i got my timer set up. Your question is, is, is the following. I have a list of the highest grossing domestic box office actors and actresses of African descent who also do not have a credited role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe film. I need you to provide me a list of these particular actors or actresses. So you will have your three minutes. That starts now. And they can be half African. I will make sure that is stated. 30 seconds remaining. Time is up. All right. Zaki, are you good with all the answers that we mentioned? Yeah, I, I, I gotta be. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So looking at both lists and looking at the main list, both of you gave me two and then a wrong answer. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No points for anyone. Ben and Ashley gave me Will Smith, Denzel Washington, Tyler Perry, and Eddie Murphy. Tyler Perry does not make the list of those, uh, the the ten names. What movie was he in? Do you know? Uh, Who, for for Tyler Perry? He's not disqualified for MCU. He's disqualified because he made a lot of movies, but he didn't star in a lot of them. He didn't make a. He didn't make. He wasn't a a high grossing domestic off box office. Right. Okay. As, okay. As much. Oh, okay. Um, Fair enough. And then Zakia and Greg gave me Will Smith, Denzel, Jamie Fox, Halle Berry, Lawrence Fishburne, and Tyler Perry. And of their list, the same first two are the only two that are on the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Jamie Fox was in the Spider Man movie. Yes, and he was in a Spider-Man movie, so that takes him out. Remember, I was looking for those who do not have a credited role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, Greg, I, do you want to tell him? Yeah, yes, I, 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 I want to con- con- uh, contest that. So he was in, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man 2, and that he was, was also not... in Spider-Man No Way Home, though. He, re- he yeah. recurred that role in Spider-Man No Way Home, which is in the MCU. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it was. Which that is when exactly that point was why he was he is not on the list. I guess with both of you tied by default, I can't give anybody no points, points on this one. We're both disqualified. No points. So here here is the list of the top ten highest and again highest grossing domestic box office actors and actresses who do not have a credited role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in its Marvel Cinematic Universe film. Uh, So number 13, Eddie Murphy. 14 is Will Smith. Number 16, and this is where I included the note that half African descent counts, 
Dwayne Johnson oh at my number goodness. 16. At number 46 is Denzel Washington. 58, Kevin Hart. At 63, Morgan Freeman. 69, and the reason why I didn't say African American, is John Boyega, Star Wars franchise. At 108, Keegan Michael Key. Wow. 133, Chris Rock. And 175, Martin Lawrence. Keegan Michael Key is very surprising. That's a, that's surprising. Yeah. What yes. the hell was he in? <laughs> that he grows <laughs> The only thing I can think of was Keanu. That like that no. made like four dollars. <laughs> Indeed, I was very surprised with the list too, and and with just like him showing up on the list. That that almost by default, I was like, I have to use this list. I have to see yeah. what happens with this list. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's no, I don't understand how King Michael Key makes this list. Oh man! All right, so after round six, Ben and Ashley have 140 points. Zakia and Greg have 120. So that is going to take us into the gauntlet. So our gauntlet category is called Soul Cinema is the new black exploitation. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, do you want to just do that then, Ashley? I like it. All right, our wager is locked in. Uh, our wager is locked in. All right, wagers are locked in. All right, so category once again is Soul Cinema is the New Black Exploitation. Question number one Despite not having a single chart on the Billboard Hot 100, what artist hit number one on the Billboard 200 album chart in 1999 with the album China Doll? Our answer is locked in. Our answer is locked in. All right, question two. Jesse T. Usher plays an FBI computer analyst in what film, which feature two other actors who starred in previous films using the same title? All right, um, our answer is locked in. Our answer is locked in. Question number three. In 1938, Cornelius Coffey was the first African-American to establish an aeronautical school in the United States and was located at Harlem Airport in what state? Our answer is locked in. All right. Our answer is locked in. So we're going to go through our questions again and reveal the answers. So question number one. Despite not having a single chart on the Billboard Hot 100, what artist hit number one on the Billboard 200 album chart in 1999 with the album China Dog? We'll start with Ben and Ashley. We said Foxy Brown. All right. Zaki and Greg? We said Foxy Brown. Question two. Jesse T. Usher plays an FBI computer analyst in what film, which featured two other actors who starred in previous films using the same film title? Uh, Zaki and Greg. We said Shaft Legacy. All right. Ben and Ashley. We said Shaft. All right. And question three. In 1938, Cornelius Coffey was the first African-American to establish an aeronautical school in the United States and was located at Harlem Airport in what state? Uh, ben and Ashley. First black flight school is in Oakland, Illinois. We said Illinois. And Zaki and Greg. We said New York. So are their answers. Uh, despite not having a single chart on the Billboard Hot 100, the artist that hit number one with the album China Doll was Foxy Brown. Uh, Jesse T. Usher plays the FBI computer analyst in what film, which also featured Samuel L. Jackson, who starred in a film of the same title as the film that Richard Roundtree starred in back in the 70s, which was just simply Shaft. And for <laughs> number three, in 1938, Cornelius Coffey, the first African-American to establish an aeronautical school in the U.S., uh, was located at Harlem Airport, which was uh, part of the civilian pilot training program, which sent many of its pilots who went on to become Tuskegee Airmen, was located in Oak Lawn, Illinois. Wow. Nice. Very good. Nice wow. job. Very good. So now that you catch the, the black exploitation in that with Foxy Brown, Shaft, and Coffee, two of which starring the great Pam Greer. Indeed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Indeed. Just my note on that. She didn't know the coffee reference. I'm like, yeah, coffee is a film featuring. I couldn't think of her name. And I was going to describe her as a light skinned woman with the amazing chest. And then I remembered her name was Pam Greer. So. <laughs> You just got to go back to the theme song. Coffee is the color of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you, right. for outing me to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you're I you're a millennial. You're not so you you know it's. Yeah. Yeah, I tried, 70s black though. exploitation is not expected to be in your wheelhouse, <laughs> and you carried me the whole game. So you know that's something to feel good about. <laughs> I think you're being so generous. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's look at our wagers. Uh, Zakia and Greg, you guys have 120 points. What did you wager? Well, well I guess um, after seeing the third question, we I feel a little relieved because we bet zero. <laughs> zero, which puts you at a final score of 120 points. Ben and Ashley, it's kind of non-consequential, but you had 140. What did you wager? Yep. I Go thought ahead, this sir. was going to be about movies. I really did. And I I told Ben earlier, my movie knowledge is like minimal at best. And I, I think we agreed that we would go with zero <laughs> for this round. <laughs> so we, 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 zero. Uh, we wagered zero. Zero. So with a final score, Ben and Ashley with 140 points, Zakia and Greg with 120. Ben and Ashley are our winners. <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats. Great job, everybody. Good yeah. Job. Ashley was a ringer, man. I'm telling y'all. She was just she was so clutch this game. <laughs> I'm telling you, all I've got is history. I don't know anything about sports. I don't know anything about actors. Yeah, if, if it weren't for Ben, I think we would have been coming up the rear of the, the whole game. Oh, so. well, I can tell you, if it weren't for you, my black car would have got revoked like in the third <laughs> round. I, just, well, I, I tried to do I tried to do as, as best a job as I could with trying to mix up the questions. And uh, li- listening to some of the previous Black History Month episodes, including, you know, the, the one that Greg and I and Zakia were on. Uh, two years ago of trying to make sure that I wasn't duplicating anything. So hopefully it was, you know, a good set that was, you know, fun yes. and challenging at the same time. Yeah, you you did a terrific job, Rob. Yes. Just hitting that button between fun, but yet challenging. Mm-hmm. Did it. And I know how hard it is to write Black History questions. You did an excellent job. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. I loved it. Awesome. It Great was, game. Was I, so much fun. Yeah, it really was. It really was. That bathroom break was really long. But other than that, <laughs> it, was a great, it was a great game. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, I just I want to thank all of you for coming on today. This was an amazing game. I hope ever, all of you enjoy listening to it. Uh, that's going to wrap us up. So for Rob, for Greg, for, oh, I'm sorry. We are forgetting one thing. We like to give everyone an opportunity to shout out, to promote any causes, or to say thanks to or uh, to any particular people or entities. So I'm going to give you all an opportunity to do that. And uh, Rob, we're going to start with you. All right. Well, do the same thing that I did last time. Adopt, adopt, adopt. There are way too many kids that are out there in the system, uh, in the foster care from state to states that need homes. You know, there there is a difference between private adoption that will cost you money and public adoptions into systems which will give you subsidies. It is not always a a thing where you have to pay for adoption. So kids are out there, they need homes, go out there and and if if you have kids and you want more kids or you can't have kids and there's kid there's kids out there find find them they're they're out there you you can have a home and have a family and enjoy the uh the bane and bene- benevolence of raising a child <laughs> it's a lot of fun but other than that obviously for those who are local here in the Detroit metropolitan area you can find me hosting Sporkle Stump Trivia uh, at Herman's Old Town Grill in Plymouth on Mondays and Eastern Market Brewing Company on Wednesdays uh, in Detroit. And also check out the podcast that I go host, Better on Draft, uh, which we do live Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitch Friday nights at 7 o'clock uh, Eastern, uh, as well as post our podcast up on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Spreaker, and anywhere else you can find those podcasts. Awesome. That's it. Thank you so much, Rob. Really appreciate you being on today. Greg, your turn. Any shout outs you want to do? I've just th- thank you all for uh, for this game. This was a lot of fun. It's, it's always 
a fun to kind of just take back into like these the dive into different uh realms of knowledge and try to see how much i know and how much i don't know but it, it was a great time um i guess my only sign off is everybody please just try to be a little more kind to each other and more kind to yourself um it, it's a it's a tough time and it's been tough but you know just try to just a little bit kinder indeed totally agree greg thank you so much all right ashley you're up uh, what I was going to say was along the lines of what Greg said. If you haven't talked to somebody in a little while, check in on them. You know, we're not able to go out as much. If you live out east, it is snowing, cats and dogs outside. So you're really not going to be going anywhere. People have been stuck inside for way too long. With that said, shout out to my my friends, Teresa, Marissa, Christine. I love you guys. And if you have if you have a moment or if you're thinking about someone, tell them that you're thinking about them. It may make they make their day. So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ashley. And finally, Zakia. I'll get on my pulpit for a second here. Organ, blood, and tissue donation, uh, especially for the Black delegation. We need to get on this. We have very, very, very specialized tissues, and we need to share with each other. I say it every year. Yep. <laughs> um, shout out to Vin Vin Vin, my mom's besties, uh, black owned wine business. Awesome. And in, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And finally, just shout out to my friend, Kimberly Ford, who looks like Pam Greer. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. I'm not even going to say what I was going to say there. So, uh, <laughs> shout out to, shout out to her. Um, again, I, I want to thank all of you. This is an amazing show. Really enjoyed all of you. Uh, so it's going to wrap us up for Rob, for Greg, for Ashley and Zakia. I'm Ben. This has been episode 358 of Trivial Warfare, where it's not just trivia, it's war. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to Trivial Warfare. Be sure to check out the revamp TrivialWarfare.com as your one-stop shop to submit questions. Join the community and get access to over 150 archived episodes. Warm It Up was written and performed by Matthew Stevens. This episode was edited and produced by me, Joel Sharpton. For help with your podcast, visit propodcastingservices.com. Joel's going to have an opportunity to edit me quite a bit today. I, I can I can feel it coming. I can feel it coming in the air tonight, like Phil Collins.